What's good with it in the hood with it? Welcome back to the collective clips where you already know we get it in. It's reaction time, right? We're going to get into another reaction. Um, this is kind of a sort of an older video um, that I came across on YouTube um, that I wanted to get my input on, man. I wanted to react to this because this right here um, is what happens in prison. This is the, the, the bleak realities of prison life. You know, sometimes, you know, people think, you know, and, and in different states is different, but people automatically assume that you can be sold up with who you want to be sold up with. But hey, man, the, the, the deadly truth and the honest truth is you have no say so over who they're going to sell you up with. You have no say so because of your affiliations, your gang ties or whatever it may be, whoever you're associated with. Does that mean at any point in time that you have any bearings on who they're going to put you in a cell with? Now, there are some prisons where people have juice. Um, they're there, they're, they're, man, the foundation is real and they're able to, you know, manipulate, you know, who you get sold up with. You know, if you have a good homeboy, who's actually well-known on that, that prison yard, or actually, you know, has some juice in that facility, in that building, then you could possibly be sold up with a good homeboy. And nine times out of 10, you know, the cops don't want to do paperwork. They don't want to make too many mistakes. You know, they don't want to see bodies. So, you know, at the end of the day, they will sell you up with your own. But there are certain situations, man, where you can be sold up with someone that has a despicable case, a bad case. And at the end of the day, what happens? Well, this is a perfect example of what happens. Um, but before we get into this video, man, let's hit that like and subscribe button. Put your notification bell on all so that way you're directed in the direction of the dope content I'm kicking right here on the Collective Clips. And I highly appreciate all the support. Now, right, this individual right here <laughs> is different. You know, this guy right here actually gets the backstory is he gets sold up with um you know someone who has a bad case a child molester a chomo you know someone who is the lowest of the low in any prison system you go to okay in society and so this man gets sold up with them and takes his life this is a story on how he did it with no regrets you know some people don't play that shit everybody has children everybody has family you know, some people were affected in different ways. Maybe they were touched. Maybe they have a, a history of being around this type of shit. Um, so they don't play. And in this case, this guy didn't play, didn't display any type of remorse, man. And this is just what it is. So let's get into the video. Second count of uh, murder in the second week. Guilty? Yes, sir. And doing so freely and voluntarily? Yes. Doing so because you are guilty? Uh, yes, sir. All right. Did you? The reason I killed him was because he was a child molester. You did, in fact, kill him. Oh, sure. And you intended to kill him. Oh, sure. Yes. So he's admitting to guilt of killing his celly without hesitation. He actually had a smirk and a smile on his face because this type of person truly feels he did a, a, a good deed for society. He did something um, that he should have done. Now, I don't promote violence or, or, or doing anything you know derogatory to a person, but at the end of the day, you have to understand, man, that in prison, there's rules and regulations. There's rules that you must live by. In society, there's rules that you must live by. When you violate those rules of society, you're placed in prison. That's your punishment for these things. Um, this individual right here is doing his own thing, man. I don't know the background. If he's a lifer, I'm pretty sure he was. Anyways, he's just trying to do his prison time according to you know what he has to do. And he finds himself selled up with someone who has a bad case, man. Uh, you know, like I said, you can't dictate your cellies. You don't know who they're going to put you with. So, you know, he ends up killing the cellie. Let's hear the story about exactly how that went down. Well, if it's all right, I'd like to tell you where it started. Go ahead. All right. Well, we were, he was my bonky and I had mm. found out that he was in prison for uh, child molestation. A really bad case. So um, that night he was trying to justify why he did it. And I just told him to be quiet and he would have to leave in the morning to find a new cell. But he continued to talk about it and try to justify it. So he was a little bit bigger than me. So I got down and I hit him in his face a few times. And when he fell, I wrapped a cord around his neck and I took his life. So you heard it in his own words, man. You know, he gets sold up with this guy. <laughs> it's a trip, man. I've seen plenty of uh, uh, of cellies killing cellies, right? Behind whatever reasons, man. One of the most notorious known, you know, uh, uh, videos that's out there. And I'll probably do a, a reaction to it. And one of the most uh, notoriously known stories is that of Jaime, uh, 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 what's his name, man? Jaime Osuna from uh, Bakersfield, you know, uh, Loquito from Barrio Bakers, who actually, you know, killed his celly. Um, he was on some psychotic, different type of shit. 
you know, but in this case, you know, this guy, they put a, 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 a known child molester into a cell. Um, the guy starts speaking on his case. He asks him not to speak on his case. Hey, homie, I'll get you moved in the morning. You just fucking maintain right there. I'll do my thing. But of course, like most of these individuals do, and I've seen it before, they start to plead their case. You know, you're not getting any less time, Holmes. You're not getting a plea bargain from your celly. He doesn't want to hear the bullshit. He doesn't want to hear you confess, but this is the reason why, oh, I thought she was older, or this is why what happened that day, or I was having a bad day. Um, you know, he doesn't want to hear it. So he tells the celly, you know, sit down, do your thing. In the morning, I'm going to get at the cop. Tell him to get you, you got to get the fuck on. Um, and this guy continues after being asked politely to, you know, shut up. He continues to plead his case. And this guy just had enough of it, man. So he sat down, uh, stewed on it for a minute, thought about it, and, and, and got to uh, whacking this dude. You know, let's hear let's hear in his words again. You know, as he's gonna admit to what he did. Just go ahead and tell us what happened. All right. I guess he decided to clear his conscience or something. But you know, he told me what he was in prison for. That he had, you know, was accused of raping a, an eleven year old girl, and no he got twenty five to life for it. And you know, I told him that's enough. I don't want to hear any more. Um, I first, you know, punched him a couple times. Still wouldn't sh Now, as you can see, his body language, when it comes to an individual like this, this is a stone cold, a uh, hardened convict. Someone who's done his time. Now, at the end of the day, he's not a uh, psychotic or he's not the worst person on earth, man. But he just has a belief system, something that was instilled in him. He has morals and values. Um, and a lot of us, you know, if I was ever to be incarcerated and sat inside a cell with someone, you know, who uh, it was a child, a self-admitted, you know, molester, then there would be consequences, you know, for that. I definitely would not let that guy just get up out of the cell, you know, and a lot of people will sit here and say that, you know, they, they'll do this or they'll do that. But at the end of the day, it's truly what you believe in, you know, um, you have to righteously make sure that that guy, you know, has them cases. There has been a whole bunch of uh, uh, things where someone gets locked up. Say you get a celly man and he's been accused or or people are smutting his name up and people are saying that he's involved in this. And a lot of people will get judged based on their looks. You know, you get an older gentleman in prison, automatically people are going to assume and start putting a jacket on him. Oh, he's in for this or he's in for that. And that guy could be a killer from way back when with a lot of respect coming from a different prison. You don't know. So you can't judge a book by its cover. You can't automatically assume and just based on what someone else says, without paperwork, without uh, righteously knowing you can't do this to your celly because it's going to come back on you. Um, and you'll notice that, um, you know, this guy, the only reason that he took the initiative to, to do this was because this guy was self-admitted. You know, this guy actually told him he did it. And so there's not going to be any slippage in his game. He's not going to have remorse. He's not going to trip. It's another day in prison. Hey, he just happened to run, in, run, run into the wrong guy this time. And this is exactly what the fuck happens. Prison 101. Shut up. Still kept telling me he wanted to explain that he didn't do it, that he was being set up and all this stuff. And I don't know, I just got mad and then hit him and, and then I killed him. When I knocked, I hit him and knocked him out and then I took the shoelaces out of his shoes, tied them together, wrapped it around his neck and strangled him. Then um, after I was done, I mean, I was, I was aware of what I was doing. You know, and then I just put him on his bed and covered him up and climbed in my bed and went to sleep. Now, this video did go viral. And, and, you know, a lot of people are interested in these stories. A lot of people are interested in, you know, the ins and outs of prison. You notice the prison genre has blown up a lot. And the reason is there's a lot of people that haven't been there or have been there. A lot of people do it to reminisce and to see how it was in different states, different prisons, the way they function. And then a lot of people... um you know, want to understand the psychology of what goes through the minds of a convict. And I'm going to tell you what goes through the minds of a convict. A lot of boredom, a lot of anguish, a lot of pain, some, a lot of remorse for, you know, what they've done in life. I'm sure this guy is very remorseful for what he's done to place himself in prison. But at the end of the day, once you're in that society and it's a whole different world, you have to function according to them, accordingly to not the, the, the cops rules, but the inmates, the convicts rules. Because if any slippage in that game, at any time that you go against the grain or, or, you know, anything happens, you can be held accountable for that. You're held accountable for all actions, just like you are on the streets. Now, what happens if this guy would have let his celly wiggle out? Now, he's saying he told his celly, you got to get on. If he would have just let his celly and maintained and kicked it, eventually, you know, his own homeboys would have probably got at him if he was part of any group. 
um, and told them, why are you in there kicking it with the cell? And now you've become just like them because you're kicking it with them. Now, whatever he has, whatever filth and garbage is on his plate is now on yours. It's spilled over because you're actually in there living with that guy. There's no way you can do that in prison. Um, you know, it, it, it blows my mind how some of these guys are able to get away with this shit for so long. Um, they just happen to run into these cellies that don't want to get in the mix, don't want to catch more time. There's a lot of people that talk that high power shit, but definitely would let these guys slide by because they don't want to get more time or they don't want to be involved. It's not because they're a good person. It's because if they feel they're, you know, prison is filled with, it's a den of thieves. It's filled with a lot of people trying to come up and a lot of people that man uh, will, will play selective politicking, will do a lot of different things. And in this guy's case, he wasn't going to do that. He wasn't going to let this guy just slide by. You know, he gave him one chance and one chance only to get the fuck out of his cell. And when this guy continued to run his mouth, well, these are the consequences for those actions. I noticed, you know, we obviously we've been in, in your cell. Look at that. It pocket. appears that all of your belongings yeah. you packed up. Yeah. Okay. When did you do that? Mm, right after I knew he was dead. Right after you knew. So. And the reason for doing that would be because when you go to the hole, that's usually what the police do to pack it up. And I figure, yeah, they're going to tear my shit up. So okay. let me just do it myself. So, so what happened to the shoelaces? Lost them down the toilet. Okay. Now, those laces came out of Ted's shoes. Mm hmm Yeah. And then when you... Well, this is an absolute case of, I guess, <laughs> right place at the wrong time or the wrong person. <laughs> you know, um, as you notice his his posture, his 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 movements... He's not really tripping. He's not the type, I believe, to just kill anybody or to go out of his way to look for trouble. Um, but at the end of the day, he's not going to function with these type of people, man. And people need to understand when they're out there committing these heinous crimes to kids, women, children, um, whatever, older people. You know, these are the type of individuals that are waiting in prison. And this guy doesn't look like a hardened, you know, he doesn't, he's not all tatted down with a crazy bald haircut and tattoos all over his head. He looks like a regular guy. If you've seen him, He'd be a regular member of society. If you seen him on the streets, you wouldn't even take a second glance at him. He has his glasses. He's clean cut. He would just be doing his own thing. These are the quiet ones are the ones that you have to watch out for the most in prison. And they and I'm going to tell you right now, when you have a crime such as child molestation or anything harming children, um, people will seek to destroy you. You were done. You flushed it down the toilet. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? Because I'm an idiot. I don't know. Just I mean, you know, obviously I don't think right. I'm a, in prison for most of my life, so my thinking isn't really rational. <clears throat> I don't know. I just kind of thought that that was the appropriate thing to do at that time. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I don't know. I just you know, I know murdering somebody's not a good thing, but I mean, Jesus, man, if yeah. there's the things this guy did, he things he said he did. I think what made this video go viral, why so many people tune in was his nonchalantness when it comes to talking about this case. But when you're a firm believer and you have a belief system that says, you know, uh, these guys are despicable and the, the crimes that they do um, shouldn't be tolerated. Um, that's where it comes from. That's where it stems from. It's not that he's a psychopath or or he could kill anyone without a shred of remorse. I'm sure, um, you know, like I said, he's remorseful for things he's done in his life. But um, in this, he's not glorifying it or asking for praise. He's just being as matter of fact as you could be. I mean, there's a lot of people like this. I had a homeboy, man. He used to do things. And and it was just a matter of fact. It was like it was like eating breakfast. I ate breakfast. I killed somebody. Then I went to lunch. Then I boned some chick. And then uh, I killed another person. Then I was like, whoa, wow. <laughs> you know, that's just how they live. I want some of my dad on the street again. So I, I do what's necessary. I do what some people won't. I mean, you guys are cops. You arrest people all the time for stuff that you wish you could shoot them in the face. I already know that. I'm not stupid. You know, I mean, I understand. there's there's crimes that shouldn't be committed. So, you know, I just have, I don't know, I just don't have any empathy for okay. people. So. Unless you've been to prison and you understand the society in there, because it's a different world. Okay, once you pass through them sally ports, them gates, them walls, that chain link fence, that barbed wire, uh, once you look at the, the the walls and you see the teal colors and the desolation, the the, the hopelessness, and and you feel that aura and you feel that sense, then you then you understand truly that you're playing by a different set of rules. Then you understand that it's your life or their life, but that doesn't mean that your moral compass isn't still there. That doesn't mean just because you're locked up or locked away from your family, or, or you know you're you're 
looked at as a, a threat to society doesn't mean you still uh, are not humane or you still are not a person. You know, there's things that certain rules people will certainly live by. And, uh, you know, I commend this individual not for the murder that he did, man. Killing people is not it doesn't make you a hero or great. Um, but by sticking to his core beliefs, you can't knock a man for that. So so basically what you did, you, you figure Ted got what he deserved. Ted got what he deserved. I believe that with all my heart. Okay. Look, you know, I hit him a couple of times and I pulled the chair back and sat in the chair and then um, he kind of got up posturing on me. You know, that's kind of like means, you know, he got up like, you know, so I was like, okay, you know, and then I caught him again when he went down. I was like, yeah, sucks to be you. I just don't think stabbing or shooting somebody's a little too impersonal. If you're gonna kill somebody. You know, and things like this, tra uh, uh, tragic events that happen, they affect not only the person that is killed, ultimately he's gone. You know, he's not gonna feel the effects after, um, but the person that has to live with it, he's gonna relive it for the rest of his life. Um, Again, he doesn't hesitate to say that he wouldn't do it again. You know, if he was put in the same position, he doesn't seek for the drama. But if the drama is there, man, he's definitely going to handle his business. And again, that's another product of your environment. That's another product of, you know, say a gang member from the streets were getting shot or shooting someone. Um, It just becomes, you know, you, you get desensitized to the to the dramatic parts of it. Um, It's just the normality of it be, becomes real. Same thing happens in prison. You know, he did what he felt was necessary uh, to secure himself. And to maintain his path, period. That's what be personal about it, right? You think that's more personal? Yeah, I just, you know, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but if you have to go to that extent, yeah. I want it to be personal. I don't I don't like violence, but if I have to go to that extent, then I want it to be personal. Plead to the second account of... Uh... And it's as simple as that, man. This man, of course, was charged, um, self-admitted this case, and did catch uh, more time... Um, it's the way it is, you know, um, I understand exactly why this video uh, did as many views as it did and it went viral and why people were so interested in it. You know, nobody likes a chomo, man. Nobody likes them type of characters. Uh, so word to the wise and to those individuals, man, that are on some Chris Hansen shit, you know, if you try to pull up with a pack of condoms and a little Caesar pizza, you know, someone's going to go bang, bang on you. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this little piece of content, man. I just wanted to throw it out there. Um, it's my first time ever actually sitting down and watching it in its entirety. Um, and what can I say? I see these type of individuals all the time, when, especially when I was locked up and incarcerated. Um, and this is what happens when you go in there with the bad crime. There's repercussions for every action, man. If you get placed in the wrong cell, you're going to get hurt, man. With that being said, move smooth with a purpose. Get everything that you want coming. And remember, at the end of the day, it's all about the struggle, the strive, the strive, the struggle, man. What would you do if you had a celly man that was in there for some chomo case? Would you react like this guy did or would you just try to move to another cell we'll see what happens huh bang bang